We've all been there, either on the giving or receiving end of being ghosted. One minute, you're having a great time with someone, and the next minute, you never hear from that person again. Well, joining us now is wellness profession and certified lifestyle coach, Andy Liu, to tell us a little bit about this ghosting culture. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. If you don't deal with this ghosting phenomenon, it can really haunt you. Yes. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Absolutely, it really can. And Look, it's such a relevant topic, isn't it? Yes. Because, as you say, everybody's going through it. Mm -hmm. But what people are starting to realise is it's a mental health subject. So many of my readers who have already read this book, it's, it's my ninth book, by the way, they're already saying to me, thank you so much for writing it because it mm -hmm. feels like emotional abuse to me when I'm being ghosted. Yeah. That just silent treatment mm -hmm. where they disappear. And it can't just happen only in dating, right? It also happens in friendships, it happens in business too and um, I'd love to talk to you about like why I felt it was so important to write it and yes please I mean let's let's get into that I mean yeah. you said this is your ninth book congratulations by the way amazing and we're gonna be talking about getting ghosted here in just a minute but what made you want to write this book specifically? Well, I'm an observer of social culture and I love to help people feel more well in their lives. And I talked about nutrition, I've written about, you know, fitness and all these different things. But mental health is the most pressing thing right now. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to feel good, feel validated. But there's a lot of, you know, behaviours that are not so good and not okay. And there's even a lawmaker at the moment who's filed a bill to say that ghosting is actually an emotional offence. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. So whether or not that that actually continues, I think it's really good to hear that people are starting to have conversations about mm -hmm. how ghosting can have psychological ramifications that can make people's self-esteem really go down. Yeah, and when it comes to ghosting, can you kind of give us a breakdown because I'm sure we've all been there, we've all done that, but for maybe people who don't know the term, break yeah. it down to us. What is ghosting or getting ghosted? Right, so ghosting, for example, is not it's not being catfished, you know, it's actually, well catfishing is when it's not a real person or it's a person that's pretending to be someone else. Ghosting is when you're having an actual relationship or a connection or an interaction with someone in business, friendship or dating and then all of a sudden they just never return your phone calls, texts, emails and they just vanish into thin air. Almost like they didn't exist. Did they die? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> Where did they go? Exactly. Where did they go? Yeah. And the most important part to the book is bringing light to ghosting culture. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to understand that we can have fun with it too because my favourite part in the book is a chapter called Who's to Blame. Mm -hmm. So I always like to go, right, let's look at the the system to blame rather than the person first mm -hmm. because sometimes we're, we're setting up a system and how you do anything is how you do everything. I so like that. Yeah, like that. we're setting up this system of swipe culture, block, delete, mm -hmm. unfriend all of these things that within you know, the technological world is kind of subliminally programming us to behave this way in our real life world as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, is it really ghosting? Like maybe we're just being a little bit too impatient and mm -hmm. that person will eventually write back or reply. It's mm -hmm. just that the way we've been programmed to behave is like everything needs to be instantaneous right yeah but when it really is ghosting it's when you know you might need to get the help of a health professional to help you through those feelings because I guess ghosting can actually feel worse than death mm -hmm. at least with death you can actually grieve that that person's no longer gone mm -hmm. or no longer there rather yeah. but what happens with ghosting is you don't know where they've gone <laughs> you know, yeah. they didn't even tell you <laughs> and it's like they vanished in thin air well let's bring it back to your book where'd they go yeah. when it comes specific when it comes down specifically to this book is it a roadmap for people to get through this ghosting it's definitely a guide there's also some personal stories in there about when I got ghosted. Your own personal experience. Yeah, and then what happened was this particular ghoster came back and that's called submarining where they resurface. Oh my goodness, and then he, back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> and then he apologised, so uh -huh. I let him back in. Okay. And guess what happened next? Ghosted, ghosted me. you again? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Yep. No. And then there's something else that's also coming to light and that is where it's called orbiting, where they'll actually have a look at all of your social media and they can, you can see that they're watching your Instagram stories but they're still not responding to any messages or texts. Mm -hmm. Now, 
It's really important to know that you can have some fun with that because, you know, it's about your perception on what's really happened too. Because maybe they just accidentally pressed the circle and they didn't even mean to watch you, watch your stories. So try and go, oh, okay, maybe I just dodged a bullet or that person doesn't even realise and just try to really move on with your life. And in the back of the book, I've got 50 ways to deal with disappearance. Wow, 50. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we sit here and, and we are having a light conversation about it, but... Oftentimes, ghosting can be very serious to somebody's, like you mentioned, mental health if they need that closure. Yeah, and I really hope to sort of heal this sort of narcissistic behaviour or gaslighting behaviour or just bring awareness to it and help people to understand that, you know, we can have fun with it because not everybody is well equipped to have a sweaty palmed conversation, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, sometimes you perhaps didn't even read the yellow or orange flags before they turned into the red flags. Before they turned into red, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And not everybody is going to feel comfortable sort of being open with you to say, hey, it's not working out or and have that difficult, challenging conversation. Mm -hmm. So perhaps make it easier for them if you really do want the truth. Otherwise, just let it go because they might actually come back mm -hmm. and then it's up to you to decide if you really want them in your life or not after that. Well, Andy, what is one final tip that you have for people when it comes to ghosting? Maybe, yeah. maybe give us a little insight, a little sneak peek into your book. Okay, so if you're really craving that, like, response, or reply, it's only your ego that wants it because the soul knows that there's something better for you. But if you want to have some fun and just try one more text, you could probably write something like, I thought Casper was supposed to be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect. Today is National Tell-A-Joke Day, so they can mix that joke in. with love the dad jokes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andy. It was so wonderful getting to know you, and we have to read this book. Thank you for yeah. talking about ghosting culture. It's available on Amazon or on my website, andylou.com.